Hello, this is Sophia Schur, a Technical Marketing Engineer Infoblox. Today, we'll be looking at MISP and how to integrate Infoblox Tide feeds into the MISP software. So this here is the official MISP website at www.misp-project.org. You can read all about MISP here, and it's also got a Wikipedia page, and there's plenty of other existing knowledge on the web outside of this official website. MISP is a free and open source threat sharing platform. It's used for gathering, sharing, storing, and correlating indicators of compromise, or IOCs, for targeted attacks, threat intelligence, or any other data you'd find a threat sharing platform useful for. You can import your data, and from there you can review it, export it, correlate it, share it with colleagues, what have you. There are also lots of plugins available for extra functionality. MISP is free, so you can download it as you wish. There's lots of ways to download and install it, so depending on your needs, you may want to do it a certain way. The demo I'm about to show you was downloaded using this AutoMISP shell script here. It downloaded a script, which was run on a fresh Ubuntu 18.04, and then the necessary dependencies for the script were installed, and an admin user was created to be able to log in for the first time to the GUI. Let's move over to MISS now. So this here is a MISS platform, or the GUI, and I logged in with the admin credentials created at installation. So when you first log in, you can see your list of events here. As you can see, I have this demo event here, and then the event for which the imported tide feed lives in. We'll come back to these later. Let's look at how to configure the integration. If we navigate to Sync Actions, List Feeds, you can see the feed set up here in order to download Infoblox tied feeds from the CSP. Let's edit it to take a closer look at it. We can click this edit button here. So you, here you can see how the feed is set up to make the integration work. You can set various parameters here for the feed. Uh, the important ones are going to be the headers and the URL. And the headers here you're going to want to input your Box1 Threat Defense API key, like so, following this formatting. And then this is the URL for which the feed is downloaded from. And you can see here in the URL parameters that it's retrieving only host types of the phishing class from the last 30 days that this feed was fetched. So let's demonstrate how MISP correlates events with similar attributes. We're going to navigate to Event Actions, List Events. And you can see our list of all events here, just like we saw before. So MISP events are populated with attributes, and attributes can be almost anything. They can be URLs, IP addresses, descriptions, almost anything you can think of. It's very user-defined. So the feed we just looked at was set to associate itself with the new event. So that's what that is here. You can specify that when creating a feed. Um, it's convenient for both functionality and organizational purposes to store feeds in this way and nicely visualizes the contents of the feed. If we click on its ID, you can see all the details of the feed stored in this event. And if we scroll down, we can see all the hosts that were downloaded into MISP when this feed was fetched. You can edit them, delete them, there's a search bar to search through them, and a whole lot more. So if we go back to our list of events, let's look at our demo event here by clicking on its ID. Here you can see its details. And if we scroll down, uh, you'll see that the event is populated with a single attribute. And this value is a known domain to exist in the imported feed. And you can see here that MISP has correlated this event with the imported feed event because this domain exists in the attributes for both events. It doesn't even have to have the same category or type. The value still exists in both events, so MISP will correlate it. If we mouse over the event ID of the feed, it tells us that MISP has correlated the value for this attribute. And if we click on it again to look at its details, you can see in the related events section here 
that the correlated event we just looked at shows up here as well. So there is overlap for where you can view this correlation information. We can also search for the value. So if we enter the value of the attribute in the search bar, there it is, all correlated. So that's just a quick demo for how to get started and correlate MISP events. Uh, MISP offers a lot of other functionality depending on what it is you want to do. You can export, edit, share data with others. It's very flexible and user defined. Um, there's even more plugins or modules available to install and enable. And you can find more info about that on the official MISP website. And that wraps up the basics for the MISP integration with Blocks One Threat Defense Tide Feeds. Thank you and happy hunting!